one. Praise. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So John chapter one from verse one. Um, nah, uh, regular King James, please. <laughs> John chapter one from verse one. Uh, message has um, paraphrased it largely. Okay. Um, yeah. No, not first John. John, um, permit me. John chapter one. John one. John one one. Thank you. Um, John one and one. Yeah, we got it. So John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, I know we know this, but there's something, you know, like I said last week, very powerful from this. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. You know, there's a lot we could learn from this, which includes, and I've shared that before, how that our words and ourselves are one. God made man like himself in his own image after his likeness. So when God speaks his word, Many of us say, oh, I wish Jesus were here, and I wish that Jesus would tell me something right now, but God and his word can't be separated. Jesus and his word can't be separated. So when you read, you know, a verse in the Bible, for instance, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, where Jesus said, you say to the mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. You know, if Jesus, were, if Jesus knocked on your door right now, like right now, like we're having Bible study right now, and there's a knock on the door, and you went to check, and it was Jesus standing right there, and he pointed his finger to you, telling you, I say to you, anything you say from today, it's going to be so. I know you know. I mean, I know you know <laughs> something different is going to happen to you. You feel like, oh, my goodness, anything I say from today, it will be so. But there's something, you know, we know as God's will for all men for all time. And Mark 11, 23 is one of such. It is the will of God to us. Is God revealing his word and just telling us, hey, you have whatever you say. Now, we could be more developed in it. Some are more developed in it than some others, but it's available to everybody. It's not that, if you understand what I'm saying. So what I'm letting us know is that the word of God and God, they are one. And so we value everything. We're going to read a couple of verses, all right, to encourage every one of us. We've read some of them before, like months back, but just to encourage every one of us and say, hey, this is the word. This is what you're standing on. So in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Verse 2 of the same John 1. The word, the same word, was in the beginning with God. And now verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. And last week we said there is the making. And then there are things. And we talked about it. So again, all things were made by him. All things were made, made by the word. Without the word, nothing was made that was made. And we clearly see that in Genesis chapter one, God kept on saying, let there be, let there be, let there be. So he spoke, what did he speak? He spoke words. God spoke words, God spoke words. And then as he spoke the words, things changed. He spoke the words, things changed. He spoke the words, things changed. You know, things changed. And that's it. God created, recreated with the words of his mouth. And in Genesis chapter 1, 26, said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. How would they have dominion? Largely also with the words of their mouth. And then Proverbs 18 tells us, all right, death and life are in the power of our tongue. So we, we know this, but trust me, truth is, if you check throughout the week, you might not have been aggressive about this like you should. All right, so that's, that's why we keep teaching this. That's why we keep saying this, because we could know it, but then, like we sometimes say, life happens. Okay, those things that come to take away the fruitfulness of God's word. So our job is to fight it, okay? My job is to consistently put before us a reminder of the word of God. We can't teach these things enough. We can't say them too much, all right? We must consistently, all right, constantly, bring before us what now the word of god so god says here all things were made by the word without the word nothing was made that was made all right so hebrews chapter 11 again verse 3 we saw it we need to see it again hebrews chapter 11 and then verse 3 thank you dear jesus all right hebrews 11 3 please 11 and then the third verse glory to god hallelujah Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, 
Okay, 11, 3. 1, 2, 3. Glory to God. Great. Amen. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Remember, you know, John says, all things were made by the word. Now, we're told here the worlds were framed. Now, yes, the systems and all of that were framed, but it still lines up with the thoughts in Genesis. Everything was made by the word, okay? Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. This is the part I really like, what the A part, but I like what the B part reveals, so that the things which we see did not come from things that appear. So that things which we see did not come from things that appear. Did you get that? So that things which we see did not come from things that appear. So the physical things we see, and then we look at the earth, or we see the sunrise, the sunset, the mountains, the landscape, and we're, oh my goodness, this place is so, so beautiful. The, the sunrise is so awesome. The, and then we get wild by all of that. But all of these things we see came from something that cannot be seen. All of these things we see came from the word of God. So the invisible created the visible. Yes, you need to hear it again. <laughs> the invisible created, and we, we, we must hear this till we believe it. Words are the most powerful things in all the universe. Words, I, I did a series and I remember I mentioned that to some of us who go, you know, watch it on YouTube. All right, the power word. And I need you to just um, feast on it. Words are the most powerful things in all the universe. Everything we see, we're created by words. All right? Words are so powerful, they transcend into the realm of the spirit. They're like, really, yeah, that's what prayer is, isn't it? We speak and God hears and God answers. We give a command and demons respond. So words are powerful, powerful enough they get into the realm of the spirit, okay? Words can travel into someone's life and alter the person's destiny. Words. I did a whole lot in that four-hour teaching. Please, if you can, I know you can. You can make out time for it, the power of words. Just head over to YouTube, Lion Rex, and I'm yeah. And then you, you find, you know, it's somewhere there, the power of words, all right? Um, it will help because I, I took time to run through quite a number of verses on that. Listen, words, words. I mean, there are things that have been said to people like 30 years and those things are still hurting and harming them. All right, words. Okay, words. Wars are started by words. <laughs> you know, peace is made by words. People get married by words. People get into relationship. It, it's words. Spiritual battles are won and fought, fought and won by words. David killed Goliath before David made a move. Do you understand that? David killed Goliath before David made a move, before David said a thing. Goliath was completely knocked down. It was completely dead. Because David kept on telling Goliath, listen, I'm going to cut off your head. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do all of this, all right? It, it, it's, it's, it's the power of words. It's, I'm, I'm running through this thing. I could just say, okay, this, no, because I'm not even going, I'm, I'm saying all this to lay foundation and I'll try to lay quickly and get out of this, you know, space and time. You know, but words are that powerful. Goliath said, I'll kill you. David said, no, I will kill you. I will cut off your head. And David said, so without a sword in his hand, and eventually he cut off Goliath's head because he won the battle. David never allowed Goliath to have the final word. David had the last word. So no matter what is, you know, confronting you like a Goliath, no matter what stands in front of you like a Goliath, don't let the thing have a last word. Keep speaking. Keep saying. It, it would, I mean, let, let's go to Mark 11. Um, I'm tempted to say, well, good temptation that would be. And we'll create a whole bit of it. But I'll just, um, allow me to open it quickly and then we'll just highlight a few places I just want us to see. But Mark 11. All right. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, um, we could pick it from 11. Great. So, Mark 11 and 11. 
Thank you. Jesus entered Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around upon him, all right, it was evening. And then he went out to Bethany with the 12. So he entered Jerusalem and then he went back to Bethany. Please notice his movement. Entered Jerusalem, did a few couple of things till evening. Then he went to Bethany. On the next day, when they were coming from Bethany, that means they seem to have been lodged in Bethany. And then they went to Jerusalem, entered into the temple, was done for the business of the day, went back to Bethany. And then the next day, he leaves Bethany again, heading to Jerusalem, all right? So he was heading from Bethany, and then he was hungry. So let's, let's read on from there. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereupon. And, you know, he came to it and found nothing but leaves <laughs> for the time of feast, but not yet. Next verse 14, Jesus answered. Now, the way the King James and a few of them put this makes it interesting. Please notice it says, and Jesus answered and said to it, oh, really? Did the tree say anything? We don't have a record of the tree saying anything. You don't answer when there's no question. You don't answer as, as in to give a response if nothing was said. All right, Jesus answered and said to it, no man eat fruit from you hereafter forever. Again, as I was heard it, but there's Jesus answered and said to it. All right, lesson to learn here amongst many others is circumstances speak to us in as much as they don't have a voice. All right, you wanted to do something, maybe you check the bank balance or um, you wanted to do something, whatever it was, you woke up in the morning and you just felt, you know, very uncomfortable, feverish or whatever it is in your body. That's your body telling you something. That's your body saying something to you right there. That, that's your body saying something. So what do you do? Like Jesus, you answer and say to it, all right, buddy, you're healed in the name of Jesus. But you have the life of God at work in you. But I speak to you because Jesus answered and said to it. All right, obviously the fig tree <laughs> just being by the roadside must have, you know, obviously communicated. I know you're hungry, but you can't get anything from me, right? I know you're hungry, but you can't get anything from me. And situations do that to us. Circumstances do that to us. I'm sure something might have done that to you this week. Something might have done that to you this month. And then something will still do that to you this week. It's a learning faith, all right? Doesn't mean the challenges might not come. It now means we're better equipped. All right, we're better armed, all right, armed to deal with challenges and to face them. They will come. What do we do? We now know what to do. All right, so things speak to us. What do we do? We speak back. You know, sometimes when you say this, people feel like, uh, aren't you guys crazy? Why would you want to talk to things? Well, people do that every time. They speak to their laptop and call it what? Stupid laptop. They call their car, dumb car, whatever it is. People, people do speak to stuff. Okay, but we do it for a creative purpose. We do it for a victorious reason. And you can't afford to keep quiet, all right? You don't have to say things for people around you to hear it. They won't get it. But in this case, Jesus spoke and his disciples heard him. And hmm. So one lesson here, all right? Jesus answered and said to me, so note, I must answer and say to that thing, Right, whatever it is, whatever you say something to it. Okay, so Jesus did all that, and verse 15 now tells us, okay, that and they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out. If you notice, I've seen all those guys in the temple, right? He didn't do anything. And one thing I learned from Jesus, which he said in John chapter 5, 19, and also verse 30, I will not do anything except whatever it is that, you know, I won't do anything except what I see my father do. I don't do anything until, you know, so he, he won't, um, so he saw them, but he wasn't hasty. He saw them, he wasn't jumpy. He didn't notice that. Jesus wasn't jumpy like I must do something. He waited for the right time. I noticed that also in Paul, in Acts chapter 16, there was this young girl, right? One demonized young girl following them all about the place and all, saying, oh, these men came from God and all here. I mean, she was saying good stuff, but she was under demonic influence doing all of that. It took a couple of days. The lady had done that several times when Paul now was there to address it. So I've seen, you know, sometimes we could jump out in ourselves and think we need to solve a problem. 
But then there is when the Holy Ghost moves you and say, now is the perfect time to do that. So Jesus dealt with this guy. So many lessons to learn here, okay? So we see him, right, dealing with them. Um, uh, so we laugh, we laugh at these people and say, I mean, they were selling stuff in church. You know, why were they selling stuff in the temple and all of that, all that? Jesus really should have dealt with them. No. If you go back in time and read from, you know, Moses and build back up, these guys seemingly built a legitimate business around what was going on in the temple. People would travel in, people will come around, and then they needed to exchange things for stuff. They needed to buy. I mean, you want to come for dedication like it happened when Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple to be dedicated. Part of what they were doing. So, so I don't have to bring the doves from home. I could get to the temple and buy the doves. So these were kind of like temple legitimate kind of business. But something had gone wrong about it. All right. And that's how things happen even in our time. Something could begin spiritually legitimate. And it creeps into something else without us knowing because the whole thing just, you know, flew, just flew by, flew away. Just put that somewhere, but note it, okay? Now, next, next verse, please. Thank you, Lord. And he will not allow that any should carry any vessel through the temple. Let's keep going. All right. And he taught them saying, is it not, I mean, written in my house, we called of all the nations, a house of prayer. All right. But you made it a den of thieves. So something corrupt obviously had happened and the scribes and priests heard it and thought that they might destroy him for they feared him right because other people were astonished at his doctrine and when evening was come he went out of the city so notice Bethany to Jerusalem back to Bethany from Bethany then he saw the fig tree then he spoke to the fig tree then went to Jerusalem then cast out all those guys from the temple then he went out that means went out of Jerusalem into the temple in the morning so the next morning, this is about 24 hours after he spoke to the fig tree. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. All right, let's keep going. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree that you cursed is with us. So this is, this is a statement, all right, a remark that, that communicates surprise, amazement. You spoke to the fig tree. And, and I love the fact that Mark noted they heard him. But no comment. Nobody said, oh, my goodness, you spoke and this thing died immediately. Lesson to learn here. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. They went from there into the city. It was evening. They went out of the city. The next morning, they were going back. Peter didn't say this on their way out of Jerusalem back to Bethany. So that means the tree was still there. Peter said this the next morning, 24 hours after Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Peter called to remembrance. If it happened immediately, I'm not sure he needed to call anything to remembrance. He called to remembrance and said to him, Master, behold, means see, see, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away. Like, Whoa, 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 case in point, someone needs this. You might have spoken to that situation. You might still be speaking to that situation and there is no obvious change. There is no obvious difference. All right, Jesus here spoke, unlike the storm, you know, that zapped out immediately. Nothing happened to the tree physically speaking. But then something did happen to the tree. It obviously must have died from within the moment the word was spoken, but nobody saw it. And the enemy likes to make us see things in the physical and say, it's not working. Oh, but I spoke. Oh, but then I prayed. Oh, but it's not working. But then you don't know what the angels are busy doing. You don't know what the Holy Ghost is busy doing, especially if there are humans involved if there are people involved okay god has to minister to somebody and then minister to someone and then minister to someone and those things get to happen and like i've had to ask in church some time ago have you ever felt impressed to do good to someone maybe give something be a blessing to somebody 
And then you delay it kind of, you know, like a little bit or a lot, you know. And you initially were like so impressed that, oh, this must have been God. Okay. So if that happened to you and then you did delay, it just lets you know that there are human interferences when certain things are going on. So, but there is the work. God worked on you. However, you delay. So that means God does work on people, but then they could delay. The, the, the sweetest assurance is this. Whatever it is will come to pass. Whatever it is will come to pass. Why? Uh, I, I, maybe we'll, we'll be done here so I don't go come back. But I could just make reference to it. Isaiah 55 and 11. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, so shall my word be. You know what? Let's just go there and then we'll be back here. We'll be back right here. Isaiah chapter 55 and then the 11th verse. It's, it's quite an encouraging, like super, super encouraging verse. It says, so shall my word be, all right, that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Okay, so this is God speaking. But well, we are children of God, and we could begin to meditate on this because it aligns with what we're going to see in Mark 11, 24 or 23. All right, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. Did you get that? You spoke it. And that's why I'm saying we have to speak. God spoke. God saw darkness in Genesis. And he didn't go, somebody help me, it's dark. He saw the darkness. He did not deny the darkness. However, he did not establish the darkness with the words of his mouth. Did you get that? God saw the darkness. Bible noted that it was dark. So God didn't deny. God didn't hide the fact. Don't let them know it was dark. God, God didn't have to hide the fact. God saw the darkness. All right? He didn't deny the darkness. However, he never established it. Listen, if God, if God said to you right now, I mean, right now is um, 8.02 p.m., all right? Eastern time is <laughs> two minutes past eight. If God said right now, it's 4 p.m. Eastern time, you wouldn't need to say, uh, God, I think you said the wrong time. No, I'm sure by the time you check out touch, the time would have gone backwards because it is God. He says it and it becomes, okay? Now, if it's conversational, um, you know, place of intercession prayer, yeah. But if God tells you it is, it, it is four o'clock right now, it is four o'clock. So his words are creative. His words create, they give life. His words are life, all right? So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty. It will accomplish, oh, hallelujah, this is interesting. It will accomplish whatever I please. And it will prosper in the thing where to I sent it. It will prosper. The word of God never returns empty. The word of God never returns void. No word of God is void of power. The word of God is powerful it itself is power do you understand that so this keep this in your mind then then we'll go back to mark 11 and then verse 21 but have this in mind and we'll go back to mark 11 21 so shall my word be it goes out of my mouth no return to me void it will prosper in the thing i sent it it will accomplish what i please all right just keep that in mind okay so mark mark 11 and then 21 thank you peter calling to remembrance said to him master see the fig tree that you cursed. How did he curse it? He spoke. What did he say? He didn't even have to say, I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. He spoke words. I mean, the blessing is an empowerment to prosper. Curse will be an empowerment to fail, to be unfruitful and unproductive. All Jesus said was, nobody's going to eat from you again. Nobody's going to eat from you. Those words went deep into the root of the tree and corrupted it, corroded it. All right, killed it right in there. The thing was standing by evening, but it was dead from within. By morning, gone. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's an encouragement for someone. I know you spoke, but your words have gone. Your words will not return empty. Your words must accomplish the thing they were sent to accomplish. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's travel again and come back. I think it's fine. I mean, if we're having, if we had like hardcover Bibles, you just flip. Put your finger, you know what we used to do, right? Put your finger there and flip, 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 check that one and flip, 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 check this one. All right, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11. Jeremiah 1 and the 11th verse of Jeremiah 1. Glory to God. Glory to God. Words are powerful. 
Words are the most powerful things in all the universe. Words are powerful. Words are the most powerful things in all the universe. Moreover, Jeremiah 1, 11, thank you. says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? His answer, all right, Jeremiah answered and said, I see a rod of an almond tree, okay? So God is asking Jeremiah, what do you see? And he says, I see a rod, the branch of an almond tree, verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform. I will hasten my word, all right? I watch over my word. I, I look into my word. I look at my word. I, I check my word. I will hasten my word to perform it. Glory to God. Let's see the NIV of this verse, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Words are powerful. Words are the most powerful things in the universe. Thank you. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Did you get that? I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So words we speak, they matter to God. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what are you saying? Once again, you don't deny the situation. God didn't deny darkness. But God said, let there be light. He didn't deny what he was seeing. However, he said what he wanted to see. He said what he wanted to see. Child of God, what do you want to see? 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 All right. God said, I watch over my words to perform it. I'm watching to see that my word. So God's eyes are on his word. God's eyes are, all right, that's my word. It's got to come to pass. That's my word. It's got to be fulfilled. That's my word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18, and we'll do verse 20 and 21. Proverbs 18. I know you know these verses, but what would they do? They would steal faith in you. Faith will come by hearing. Words are the most powerful things in the universe. Words are the most powerful things in the universe. It says here, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. With the increase of his lips, he will be filled. A man's belly will be satisfied. Let, let's deal with that 20th, just a little bit. A man's belly will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. With the increase of his lips, he'll be filled. He means our lives. Listen, guys, our lives can be satisfactory. How? Your, your tongue. Are you okay where you are? The answer very likely will be no. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. And our daddy, listen, I said something on Sunday. We look a lot at social media and then whatever is out there is your, your family album is God's word. You, you have the word of God, okay, to show you. You have God's word to show you your lineage. And the core person, the number one person in our lineage is our father, our heavenly father. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We'll see it. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth with the increase of his lips. So if you're not satisfied, then don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. Keep, you, you say it. And then you continue saying it. You said, but I said it before. Say it. I said, say it. <laughs> you know, but I said, say it. Just don't stop. What are you doing? You're affirming. You're establishing what you believe. And at those moments, the enemy will come with thoughts, all right? Sometimes it comes like suggestions. This thing is not too serious. You can't just, you know, be talking. You just relax. You might think you're mad and all kind of stuff. But you say it. A man's belly will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. It means I can talk and talk. And, and after a while, after months, and I've seen this thing happen before. I've seen, I've literally seen this thing happen before. I've been privileged to pastor, you know, over the years. And I've seen an empty, empty auditorium. <laughs> And after a couple of months, it took months, saying it every day, saying this place is full, this place is filled, saying there's no space in this hall at all. Till one day, and it happened many times after that, till we had around like multiple services and move. People were sitting at a staircase going downstairs, as in, because it was like the middle floor of the building. But the first time I stepped in there, 
There was no money to pay for that building and there was no human being, all right? But then you say it and then you say it and then you say it and then you say it, all right? It's not, it's not because it's now happening, then you start saying it. Oh, then you're encouraged. Now those things get to happen, but it could be tricky. Oh, thank you, Lord. I might need to say that to somebody because I've seen that. Someone says, oh, it's malaria, oh, it's this, oh, it's that. And then, you know, maybe prayer is made, all right? Or, you know, words are spoken. And then the person gets better. And I've seen, hey, I'm okay. I'm like, don't stop. Oh, but I'm fine. Don't stop. Don't, don't stop. And then two, three days later, the person is like not down, almost like worse than what the person was before. Why? When we just see a little bit of recovery, we throw away everything. I've seen that too many times. Too many times. If I get to tell people, you know, I'm sure you know about them relapsing fever. I said, when this thing goes off, when it wears off, use that time you're strengthened to go and load up on God's word. Because, you know, by evening, I'm sure maybe that's happened to someone around you before. Person's good in the morning, strong, strong, strong. And then by evening, the whole thing, whole thing. Or for some, it's the reverse. They're, you know, at that time when you're okay, load it up. You know, through the word, through the word, through the word, through the word, through the word. So when the thing comes, you've, you've, you know, you've started a lot more word in yourself. You've started a lot more word in your heart. You can attack it better with the word and it just looks like the thing came upon us suddenly and that's how we're learning this all right so if this has happened to you for me it's happened to me it's happened to a lot but we learn from that and then we get better so it's like an encouragement not a condemnation a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth with a, look at your life look look at the different compartments of your life are you totally satisfied if the answer is no then keep talking Talk until, until you could look at everything that says shalom, peace. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. A man's belly shall be satisfied. I love this verse. I know the next verse we're going into is more popular. Everybody knows the next verse. I know, I know, I know. But I'm saying don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. You could wake up in the morning. I mean, Bible's prescription. Is day and night, all right? So you can wake up and go, thank you, Father. I declare in the name of Jesus, as you commute to work, whether you're in the bus or you're driving or, you know, however it is you get to work or, you know, you work from home a couple of minutes before you start. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Then you take a break. Then you're in the restroom. Then, thank you, Father. Now, must it be like that? No, you could just set 30 minutes in the evening or 30, you could just do a block of time. However it works for you, all right? No legalism here yeah, that strains us and then you go but most important thing say something say something a man's belly shall be satisfied many times we wait and say oh god when god's like open up your mouth open your mouth and i'll feel it open your mouth and say something open your mouth and change something are you getting this child of god a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruits of his mouth with the, ink, with the fruit of his mouth, with the increase of his lips, he will be filled, I'll be filled, you'll be filled, we will be filled with the increase of our lips. You sell goods, you do business online or something. Speak. Oh, people don't get a bite. Speak, speak, speak to it. Speak to it. Do you have investments? Do you have bank accounts? We all do, right? Speak to your bank account. Call it flourish and declare that streams of income comes into it. Whatever it is, and then you say it, and the ideas will come. Sometimes we wait for the idea. What am I saying? What am I saying? Say it, just say it. Say it. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips, he will be filled. Don't describe the situation. Speak what you want. Speak what you desire. Now, doesn't mean uh, maybe you're talking to a friend about business and you need ideas of my business it hasn't you know been taken off for quite a while. I need to know what to do. That's not a wrong confession, okay? In a multitude of counsel, there's safety. So that's you within the environment of counsel, all right, describing something. In the beginning, the, you know, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth, and yet it was without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. That's not a confession that is negative. That's a description of a situation. It says, how are you doing? Well, I feel this pain 
in my back. You need to tell someone you know would understand what you're saying. Okay, um, would you need us to agree together? Would you need go? No, I'm standing on the word already. I just thought you should know that I'm dealing with this. All right. And then we're on the same page so we understand ourselves. Okay. So that's describing something because sometimes we hear this kind of teaching and say, um, what's up your back? No, nothing. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> there's nothing on my back. And then I'm going, and there's nothing on my back. No. All right. Um, yeah, I, I have this pain, but, but I'm dealing with it with the word. And if you are taking some, you could also mention to person, well, I, I took a couple of medications and then but I'm, I'm, I'm on the word. I'm, I'm good. It's a description. It's not a negative confession. It's different from, man, this back is killing me. It's like, it's seriously killing me. In fact, I can't stand it. I'm, I'm, I, I'm I, you know, if we continue the exam, I even die. I don't even know what <laughs> You know, all those things. You know, that, that one, you need to zip your mouth like, zip zip it <laughs> you zip it all right so we have to learn the difference okay um oh would you want to you know run into that project right now nah i think i might need to you know um release my faith for a bit more funds about that um you know my capital is not up to that as i yet you're describing something i don't have i don't even know how i'm going to have i can't get it i don't know <laughs> okay. you might be establishing all right so you know, and then some say, I have in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, trying to say you don't have, but you don't want to say you don't have, so you basically understand that you have. You know, so, so I'm, you know, you know, I'm reaching Jesus' name. Now there's what we could say. I don't do that. Um, not now, but you know, I believe I have abundance. I have abundance. So yeah, when you know it's faith, you know it's faith. Don't forget, I say, man thinketh in his heart. So is he so? If in your heart you, you are trying to say, I'm broke, I'm broke, well, I can't say I'm broke, but I'm going to code it so you know I'm broke, then what you're saying is I'm broke. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right? So if you're coding I'm broke, you're saying I'm broke. If you're coding, I'm strong, I'm just strong. I'm really, really strong. And you're trying to say, don't you get, I'm not feeling well. Then you're actually saying, as a man thinketh, so is he. All right? You got that? So faith doesn't deny. This verse is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. A man's belly will be satisfied. Are you satisfied? My brother, my sister, if the answer is no, then let's keep talking. If I've talked this thing for 100 years old or 80 or whatever it is, I'm going to talk it, all right? A man's belly will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth with the increase of his lips. It will be filled. All right, let's go to the next one, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Death and life, we know this one, but don't get too familiar with it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. They that love it, they that love it, love which? Which of the it? Do you love death? Do you love life? You have to understand the power of the tongue, power of words. But like I said, and thank God it's been put right there. You could check you know, the chat box. Go to YouTube, please. There is a forward teaching power, power of words, the unrealized power of words. It will bless you, all right? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, all right? They that love it, they will eat the fruit. So if I love life, it means I'm going to use my tongue to what? Speak life, and I'm going to eat the fruit of it. You speak to your body, speak to your nerves, you speak to your womb, you speak to your life, you, you speak. You say, is it all about speaking? No, but speaking has a major part to play. Did you get that? Is it all about speaking? No, but speaking has a major part to play. God spoke, spoke a whole lot. Prophets were busy speaking. Jesus came and he was always speaking. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. He, he, everybody was speaking. We are trying to rationalize, you know? We're trying to be woke or, you know, whatever the language is. We're, we're trying to rationalize, you know? Must I always have to say, you know, I'm a very rational thinker. I don't think I need to say something. Come on, just humble yourself according to God's word and say something. Glory to God. Thank you, dear Jesus. This is blessing you. I believe it is, okay? All right, so back again to Mark eleven twenty one. 21. That's, that's where we, you know, took off, but I believe it's, it's, it's been worth it. So Mark eleven twenty one. 21, Peter calling to remember and said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away. Jesus spoke to him. All right, and we've seen now the power of words, and that's how Jesus reigned. He saw this victory, peace be still. That's what he did. And that's what God wants us to do. Okay, now verse 22, it, it gets interesting here. Jesus now said to them, I want you to 
Look at the verse, whether on the screen or in your Bibles where you are. Why don't you look at the verse? Why don't you listen to me? Don't forget, Peter said, Master, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And Jesus answered right here and said to him, yes, because I am the son of God. No, right? <laughs> no. All right, Jesus could have, and unconsciously that's what sometimes we preachers of the word and teachers, you know, apostle prophets, you know, that, that's what we kind of like to do. We, we, we now turn this to a dimension. Oh, because this is my realm, man. This is where I operate from, and, and that's why I don't understand it. That's why I can never get it. That's why, I, you know, I'm on a higher level. I'm very high in my high level. And then we make it sound like that. But Jesus, if you read through, never really tried building that kind of ministry of life. He had every right to. But he endeavored to always bring himself to our level or lift us up to his own level. Jesus just wanted the playing field to be straight. Us seeing that we could do. Do you understand? And that's what he did here. Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. All right? Have faith in God. Have the faith of God, actually. Have the God kind. Have, have that faith. And then 23, he expounds it. All right, let's, let's see the next verse, please. For verily I say to you. So Jesus is speaking, he's, he's going further now. He says that whosoever shall say to this mountain, there's an argument where the you know, mountain here is figurative, literal. He just spoke to a fig tree, a real life fig tree, a standing by the road fig tree, a no leaves, and then you didn't, we didn't see the next day wither the way fig tree. That's what he spoke to. So context here is real mountain. We could not apply it figuratively, but context is real in context. Whoever says to this, obviously he must have pointed because he just spoke to the fig tree and this story. So he said, this is not a problem. If you speak to this mountain, this one, he must have pointed. He said a mountain, he said this mountain. Whosoever, and, and the first thing he brought up there is a revelation, you know, right? To better buttress the fact that he didn't turn this to one very high level, you know, high dimension kind of stuff. He said, whosoever. Guys, it means anybody. That's the life that Jesus lived amongst his people. God in the flesh. Showing man how man could operate in the flesh with divine abilities. He didn't make this so spooky, difficult, deep. Anybody. So let's read it that way, all right? Very I say unto you that anybody who says unto this mountain, anybody, and the person says, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. This is the key here. Shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that the things which he says will come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Anybody, guys, not apostle, not prophet, not 10-year-old believer, anybody. And there are a couple of anybody's right here with me, and there are a couple of more anybody's who will get to watch this once we upload it later. Anybody. So this is a truth here. This is Jesus talking to you and me, saying, don't keep quiet. Say something. Don't just say, mean it when you say it. Let me say it this way. The mountain knows when we're serious. Did you get that? The mountain knows. The mountain knows. The realm of a spirit can perceive. All right? She meant it. He meant it. Because that's the key. Anybody who says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, I will not doubt. The thoughts will come. The, the reasons to doubt will come. Give up. Quit. It's over. It's not going to happen. I mean, you're speaking. You're saying I'm going to be satisfied in my life. And then you're saying it. Talk, talk, talk your way to the top. Many times we need to be reminded about this. I'm reminding you, reminding me. We need to keep talking our way. Talk your way out of that level. Talk into the next level. Talk away from that level. Talk into the very next level. 
you talk, of course, you power up with prayer, with fasting, you know, fasting when necessary, a lot of prayer. Stay on the word. Yeah, but power up with the words of your mouth. With the words of your mouth. All right? You believe in the heart that the things you say will come to pass. Jesus said that person, that anybody will have whatever he says. This is amazing. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Glory to God. Glory to God. So if you put together the verses we've seen tonight, they're, they're quite interesting, right? We've seen Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my words be that God of my mouth, they will not return to me void. We've seen Jeremiah, you know, chapter 1, 11 and 12. We've seen Proverbs 18, 2021, 20, words, words. Jeremiah says God is watching his word to perform it. Words don't return to us empty, particularly God's word in our mouth. These words will never return to us empty, but you have to use them. You have to speak them. You can't just keep them on your pillow, under your pillow. You know, you say something. Once again, you don't deny the situation, but then you don't establish it with the words of your mouth. You say what you want. So we, we begin a round up now, Genesis chapter one. From verse one again, all right? This is, it's our text. It's our textbook. It's our manual, all right? God's word. It's, it's how we learn. It's how we live. In the beginning, God created heavens and earth. Verse two says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of us. I want you to see something here. The earth was without form. It was chaotic. It was void, it was empty, it was without form, it was formless. But God created it. So Bible scholars believe between verse 1, verse 2, there was some level of destruction. Many believe, you know, brought about by the casting down of Satan upon the earth and all. All right. But the earth was without form and void. That was upon the face of the deep. And then the Spirit of God moved. I believe there was an incubation. He was moving, inspecting, and envisioning what he wanted to see. That's, that's what I believe he was doing, all right? He moved upon the face of the water. Verse three, and I want you to see something. So we're going to do a little bit of exercise. I, I read exercise, all right? And God said, let there be light. And there was, we know that. He said, but don't forget, he saw darkness. He saw chaos. He saw disorder. The earth was chaotic. It was in you know, disarray. He saw it, but he didn't go, what am I going to do now? He did what he knew to do. He spoke. We said last Sunday, pray like a priest, speak like a king. All right? Pray like a priest, speak like a king. Kings rule and they reign by the words of their mouth. All right? Last Sunday's message, it will bless you. Check the website. All right? You just go to the audio part of the website and then you just get blessed by it. All right? It, it will bless you. It will bless you. It will bless you. <laughs> it will bless you. Just hear it again. All right? I'm sure information about website will be up, all right? If, if it's not there, I can't um, see the chat, but I know there's, there's someone's posting on the chat, all right? But www.solcc.ca, okay? All right, um, now, a few more minutes. And God said, let there be light. And he saw darkness. He didn't say, oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He didn't deny, it, but he didn't establish it. He didn't deny, it, he didn't establish it. What did he do? He spoke what he wanted. So say what you want. Now, I'm going to mention a verse, and all you're going to do is where you are, and I believe you can, read out the first three words of that verse. For instance, this is verse three, and what it has is, and God said, all right? So I'm just going to pick up verses. It's an exercise, all right? Just pick up verses, pick up verses till the end. So verse three, you go, and God said, all right? So verse six, first three words again. Let's go. And God said, did you get that? All right. So what now? Verse nine. First three words again, go. And God, what did he do? He said, all right. So verse three, verse six, verse nine. Now verse 11. All right. Verse 11 now. First three words again. And God said, okay, we're doing good. Now verse 14. Are you ready? Verse 14. First three words again, and 
God. So don't forget now, put this together with Proverbs 18, 20, 20. A man's belly will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So I said, you, you look at the different areas of your life and talk and say and say and don't stop. So what do we see here? God who said something, I want light, there's light, I want this. And then I, then, then you, you, you're going to keep talking, all right? <laughs> okay, so this is verse 14. And God said, okay, so where do we jump to again? Now, verse 20. Let's see verse 20. Okay, 20 says what now? First three words, and God. Hmm? What do you do? Said, all right, verse 24. What did God do in 24? And God said, verse 26. What did God do in 26? And God said, now let's go to verse 31, the very last verse. What happened in 31? Okay, <laughs> verse 31. And God, you might have said said without reading, right? Okay, and God saw everything that he had made. Glory to God. How did he make them? He spoke them, all right? And don't forget John 1, 3. All things were made by the word. Without the word was nothing made that was made. So God made this world by his words. And now, of course, God saw is after everything he said, all right? I just left the supper till the end here. And God said, and God said, and Larry said, and, you know, everybody, everybody's saying, you, you say and say and say, a man's belly is satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips will be filled. My belly is satisfied. If I'm not satisfied, I'm not going to stop saying, I'm not going to stop saying because I'm not satisfied. I'm going to keep speaking about this and about that and about this. And I speak to this and, I, and we're going to keep doing the glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. All right, so wherever you are, just take a couple of minutes and speak, 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 all right? Speak, speak, speak. We could just flash Proverbs 4 and 18 on, on the screen. First of all, we could just use it as a springboard, all right, in speaking Proverbs 4 and then the 18th verse. A man's very satisfied, but Proverbs 4, 18, but the path of the just is a shining light that shines more and more. Onto a perfect day it means your life can only get better. Your life is only expected to get brighter. Every new month is a plus. Every new year is a plus. Every new week is a plus. Believe it, all right? Now go ahead and speak, speak, speak. And you said, and God said, whosoever, anybody, anybody, that's you. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Father. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak. Speak to your home. Speak to your life. Speak to your health. Speak to your finances. Speak to your job. Speak to your projects. Speak, speak, speak. Just Take a minute, take two, take, okay, I've spilled over a little bit, but hey, just go ahead. Thank you there, Jesus. Go ahead. Hallelujah. You know, charge, energize yourself by, you know, talking tongues a little bit, but, you know, let's, let's do the speaking. Do more of the speaking. You know, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha Thank you. Glory to God. We give you praise. Just speak. Say something to it. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the situation. Speak to the circumstance. Say something to it. Say something to it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. My path is a shining light. It gets brighter. I'm bright onto a perfect day. My path is a shining light. It gets brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. My path is a shining light. It gets brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, dear Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give you praise. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I, I'll time out the meeting now. Um, you, you, in case you just want to keep, you know, um, speaking God's word where you are, if, if you want to take a bit more moments to do that, well, allow me officially just time out the meeting, just end. Oh, thank you, dear Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We give you praise. So you speak. You, you could do that again tomorrow. Do that, you know, over the weekend and just say to the mountain, say to every situation, say to everything happening all around you. And just speak to it in the name of Jesus. And God said, and God said, and God said, and remember every verse we've used tonight. So shall my words be that go forth out of my mouth. They will not return to me void. They will not accomplish what I please. They will prosper where I send them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I have what I say. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So allow me time out now. Um, so we'll see you on Sunday, um, 9 a.m. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be great.